one, two, three. Tum, 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 tum. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Welcome to our from a distance chat. It's it's really nice to have you have you along. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you very much, Stephen, for the invitation. We are six for chords, a uh, vocal ensemble from Munich, um, founded in 2013. We had a slight um, lineup change last year, and now we are here. I'm really glad to meet you today and to have a little chat about singing and a cappella and all that stuff. Thank you. I love I love your name, Six Four Chords, and I was wondering, is it as simple as six people, four chords, or is it, it or was it even a little bit more musical playing, as in the Six Four Chords, as in the second inversion chords, yeah, that as was we call them? Both of it. Yeah, yeah. okay, so lo lots of uh, interesting. Um, it's really nice to have you along. Um, you're based in Munich. Can you tell us, can you go around the group and just introduce yourself and a little bit about your musical backgrounds, individuals? Will you start? Okay. Um, my name is Manuel. I'm singing the tenor. Um, I just joined the group uh, a year ago and we are friends for a long time. So we knew each other before and um, I'm studying in Munich at the University of Music and Performing Arts. Um, started with education of music to be a teacher in a school but while studying I um, really love to conduct while different ensembles, orchestra, choir and so I started to study um, choir conducting and orchestral conducting too and that's what I'm doing right now. Um, Great, how has it been the new, the new uh, guy on the block? How, how does that feel? Has it been a lot of um, settling in, a lot of learning of music? Yeah, I really was close to the group before because we are friends, so I, mm -hmm. I knew them and I um, was with the concerts and often hear rehearsals, so it was not that great. Um, oh, everything is new because we are all sure. friends a long time ago. And um, yeah, so I was really happy that they asked me um, for, for yeah. singing together, and so now we are together. And Manuel, I was very happy to hear your, your singing on Happy, which is really very cool. You, you fit in so Thank well. You. Thank uh, you. What a great addition to the group. Next, who's next? Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm the bass of the group and I'm also new to the group. And I'm singing here since uh, September of last year. And yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm studying right now music to become a teacher, just as Manuel did. And I'm still 20 years old and not as old as the rest of the group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <baby. laughs> yeah, I'm the little baby of the group. Um, yeah, and um, I'm, I'm not singing uh, that long yet in my uh, studying uh, career, let's say, um, because I first started singing while studying and uh, I, I sang in the Madrigal Chor at the mm -hmm. university. Performing arts here in Munich, and so I um, got to know Manuel there, and he asked me if I if I wanted to uh, to join the ensemble, and yeah, it's it's great fun to sing with these guys. And yeah, I, I did a, I did a rehearsal in the choir, and he sang the bass, and it was a, 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 a E sharp down there, and I said, hey, you are your only bass. <laughs> Great, and and you you're you're a pretty cool groover as well. In that happy uh, video, yeah. you're kind of you're, you're really kind of dancing away. It's it's quite. Do you enjoy singing the bass part? Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's great fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Who's next? Hi, I'm Julia. You. I sing the alto part, 
but um, I changed with Veronica. She's missing today because she has to sing in a church, I think. Yeah, in a church service. <laughs> yes. Um, we changed in, mostly in pop and chess arrangements. I sing the mezzo-soprano part and Veronica sings the mezzo-soprano part in classical arrangements or songs. Right. Yes. Uh, I also studied um, educational music in Munich. We know each other from there. And right. at the moment I'm at home because of parental leave. Is it yeah. possible? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have two childs and so So you yeah. have a new baby. No, not a new one. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, three and a half and almost two years old. Right. Great. So so in the in the you are singing the second part down in the in the in the happy arrangement. And Veronica, who isn't here, she yeah. sings the alto. I, I, I've got it clear. I was really some something that I was really loved about about your group when I was watching that video was well, especially one thing that struck me is because I was kind of thinking about a few other things while I was watching you guys. And I was really surprised to have Veronica and Manuel. Their voices are so similar when they pass the leads on from one to another. They yeah. pass that solo line on. And I suddenly thought, oh, hold on, Manuel's singing now. And it sounded, it's very, the color of the voice, the handover is very cool. Very well done. And, yeah. and last but not least, we have our top soprano. Yes, I'm Ruth. Um, I also studied in Munich. Um, it's also educational education. music. <laughs> <laughs> we are all uh, teachers for, for yes. school. Yeah. But I'm at home too, and I have the little baby with two months. Right here, shaking it yeah. for <laughs> keeping her Oh, sleep. wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello, baby. And, what, uh, who is your baby? What's your baby called? Teresa. Mezzo soprano. <laughs> <laughs> Mezzo soprano. <laughs> but alto in the uh, light music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how that's really nice. So you, you, you all, you, you, you sang in lots of choirs and a lot of choral background in the in the Munich area, um, and you're all studying to be education. Yeah. Um, well, education majors, as we might say, ed educationists are going to be teachers. That's interesting. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, career teachers who are very young, um, who you know decide at a very young age that's what they want to do. They're going to be, and I think your system in Germany is slightly different to to what we have in 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 the UK. I think people decided to a much younger age that they want to do music to become a teacher and they they follow a set they go to music hochschule and they 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 kind of have that in mind and it's a it's kind of a set um a set pathway whereas i think in england it, it's a little bit more accidental how how things happen sometimes people study music then decide oh, i don't think i'm going to do a, a career as a performer what shall i do might do something else and then they might come back to music but i think you're a as ever, the Germans are a little bit more organized about the way they do things, including education. And uh, so good luck with all that. So you got together and tell us about your arrangements and who, who does those and, and your inspirations. Oh, sorry, Raphael, we haven't heard from you yet. No problem, I'll just include that. So I'm um, Raphael, I'll do the baritone part most times. Sometimes in really few arrangements I'll change with Manuel, but mostly yeah. I do baritone. Um, before we had Manuel, it felt to me to do some arrangements, but he's younger, has more energy, and so he does <laughs> much more arrangements for us. Yeah. Um, and for the inspiration, I think that's something that yeah, connects us all. There's the big groups, of course, like King Singers, Real Group, Rayaton, yeah. um, Wise, Guys. Wise Guys, the for a long time most famous German group, Oh. Um, also, um, how do you call it? Oliver, Oliver Gies, maybe Bob. Uh, yeah. So it's all different kinds of music which we enjoy. Yeah. And of course, as you mentioned, the, the different choirs where we sang. So there's the Madrigal Chor of the Musikhochschule in München and the 
the Bavarian Youth Choir, where mm. yeah, we three and Veronica were in, and also all our um, former tenor, Andreas, who left last year because he had so much other work stuff to do. Um, yeah. He was in the Landesjugend Corps as well. So with the, with the blending of the voices, which you mentioned, um, that's something I think we, we can, yeah, where we can relate on because we have in a long time the same voice training and the same uh, yeah. aesthetical um, ideal which we're trying to, to focus on. And it, it's interesting. I, I was speaking uh, to some other vocal groups and, and a lot of um, people involved in, in, in small a cappella groups often as part of their musical training have played instruments or actually their major has been playing the flute or violin or doing something like that. Uh, do, you, do you have experience of, um, of playing instruments or are you all singers? Yeah, of course, um, studying educational music, you always have to play instruments too. So oh. every, at least one instrument. two instruments, the, the piano and some other instruments. Uh, but um, it's, uh, I think in, in the last time in Germany as well, it's really popular to sing in vocal groups together because there's no need of instruments. You can go together for, for people and start um, and right. sure. music um, at the moment. Sure. So quite there's, um, um, it's always been, well, I've always said to, to vocal groups, um, you know, when I've worked in, in workshops and, and festivals and competitions and things that actually they, the, the voices don't have to be brilliant or, or amazing or the highest caliber. But what's always important is how you, how you listen um, for intonation, of course, and you have great intonation, um, but how, how you listen this way and change your sound so it becomes one. Um, tell us a little bit, a bit about this happy arrangement. Um, who, di who did that? It was me. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I love this song. I really love the song. And I, I, I think that might be the first a cappella arrangement I've heard of it. But I haven't listened to lots of a cappella uh, arrangements to, to search for it. But um, I love that song. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it is an arrangement of me. I did it some years ago. Um, I really love to arrange. Um, it started when I was at school, really young. Um, did music with, with other colleagues and friends and uh, started because we all um, were singers uh, even then in my school time. And um, then it was some years ago, it was not so simple to get some scores to sing in small formation so I started to say hey um, I write it I, 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 I arrange it um, so it, that's um, how I became arranger for, for vocal groups for choirs I do a lot of arrangement for the school choirs or school orchestras and so um, getting here with with six four chords I, I said oh well yes I have to write a lot of arrangements now um, yeah. and he is one of um, my favorite pop songs uh, or where one of my favorite pop songs a few years ago and um, yeah because some pop songs, um, when they are released, small time later, there's an a cappella arrangement, and famous group sings this a cappella arrangement. At and, least uh, since Pentatonix got on the market, yeah. which are pretty close after the deadlines, where there's a release two weeks later, later there's, there's a Pentatonix a arrangement. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. Some, I think some pop songs, uh, which are very famous, there are no a cappella uh, arrangements, and that's my... Um, idea, um, I think of some songs where I didn't find some a cappella arrangement and think, oh, well, that would fit. And then I uh, start to think about how it could be. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, you, you've got a, you've got a, a video of, um, of one of my favorite folk songs. Um, and uh, this is Danny Boy.
It's a great tune. Um, where does that arrangement come from? Oh, again. <laughs> oh, again. <Okay. laughs> okay. So he's getting Star Arranger today. Yeah, it's great. Hey, tell us a little bit about your decision when to use microphones, when not to use microphones, and, and, and how you decide that. Well, when we, when we started in 2013, our idea was to have only the voices, no microphones to stay really with the natural sound because you have these, the other side like wise guys like pentatonics who have a really sometimes overproduced sound in my artificial, mind. artificial sometimes. Yeah. Um, so first we started like this, like this and said, okay, we're just voices. We're just singing in locations where it's possible without microphones. Um, and the start for the microphones, in fact, was our concert, which we have in July, um, where we were singing open air. So hopefully with COVID and all that stuff, it will be possible. The, um, the no newest rule is 500 people outdoors. So looks good. <laughs> wow. So that's, yeah, you, you kind of um, preempted my, my question about what's coming up and, and how, how things have been. So you, you've got a concert in July. Yeah. And that's planned and it's going to be live and it's outside. Yeah. Tell, tell me, um, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer singing on the mics or not? Well, it's, it's the first concert we're doing it. So we're still in some finding um, yeah. time, I think. Of course, it has a lot of possibilities, especially for Jacob at the bass. He doesn't have yeah. to fight for his sound, just getting close and, and have full tune. Yeah. Um, it but opens, it yeah. opens also possibilities to, to sing another kind of repertoire. So with, yeah. with such a kind of pop songs like Happy, um, where you have a little bit of mouth percussion or something like that, it um, gets uh, yeah interest, more interesting with singing it with microphones. Yeah. Do without. So, certainly certain things become easier and, and, yeah. and singing outdoors in, in the open air, it, it becomes immediate and it's less hard work. Yeah. And other things become a bit more difficult with hearing each other while yeah. wide distance. And, uh, yeah, I, my my experience from microphones was was if you're going to use them, you've got to kind of treat them very carefully because you're 
you, unless you've got your own sound person, you're in the hands of a complete stranger who has his ideas and it might not be the same ideas as you and they start messing with the balances. And, but hopefully you can set a good level and, and, and play it. But it's very difficult, you know, in, in, in ear monitors and now the norm, um, having all sorts of notes fed to you through the in, in ear monitors so you don't have to blow notes. And, you know, it's kind of, um, it's a whole different science. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to, to groups who were on mics back in the 80s, but like the swingles with long cables, you know, this, the, the, this idea has, has kind of gone now. <laughs> cables have become something of the past. Um, but you're right. They, they come with, with lots of problems. And, and, and sometimes it's keeping it simple is, is if you can, you know, if you're in a, a room that will allow you to, to sing to people, of course, outdoors, singing with orchestras, all those kind of things become really difficult. And um, I used to, I, I say this because I, I used to love as being, being the bass. I used to love being on the mic because it made my, my life very easy. I could just breathe yeah. the notes and get a bit closer, but <laughs> it also would have some problems with the group intonation. And as you say, hearing, and and relying on the monitor levels and all that sort of thing so it came there was lots of comfort on the mics but also it wasn't certainly in in the case of the king singers when whilst i was singing for those couple of decades it was it, it was it wasn't the true representation of the group uh but I thought you had a great sound on Happy, and you seemed to be uh, quite happy with what you could hear, but you were in a small space. So anyway, I look forward. So you're, where's your concert going to be in July? Someone else. <laughs> I'm talking all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. in Wolfratshausen. It's the uh, town. It's my hometown where I grew up. It's yeah. South of Munich. Is it part of a little festival or what, what's... Yeah. Nice. It's it's called the Thrillos Festival, which is there um, every two years. Yeah. And it's really nice. They they are building a stage on the river. And oh, the, nice. The audience is on a um, on a hill. On yeah, like a hill, but it's built up for the spectators. Um, yeah. So it's a really really lovely ambience. In the best case, the weather is good, and you can have a, a drink before the concert and and. Get a nice chat and then that sounds very civilized. Eight o'clock we are starting. That's really good. Yeah. Really nice. I have um, I have many good memories of very civilized festivals in Germany. You yeah. do do summer festivals very well. I also have a great memory of doing a, a festival, a summer festival similar to this, but it was it was in a quarry in Canada, just outside of south of Toronto, and the quarry was flooded so it was a big lake with high cliff walls yeah. and the audience sat around the top of this cliff and the artists that was us in this case we we were taken out on a little fake steamboat like a little tiny motor boat which looked like a steamboat to this floating stage Wow. Which was comical. I found it very funny to be going out and just standing on this boat, being taken <laughs> out across the water to this stage. And um, it, it wasn't too dark when we started, so we could see the audience. And then it got darker and darker. And we'd done a sound check. We were on microphones on stands because we were singing madrigals. We were singing Schubert, Schumann. We were doing part songs. We were doing a real eclectic mix. What I didn't realize is, um, is one, once it got dark, in, in this quarry were thousands of frogs or toads or whatever they were, and they started to sing. And um, it was one of the concerts where the music almost stopped several times because we were laughing. And, you know, when you're, you will know from trying to sing and laugh at the same time, it doesn't work. So, um, yeah, I tried to, um, I think we were singing a song, a song called Lieber, 
Lieber Rausch der Silberbach. Uh, <laughs> it was a little bit like that. Um, so tell, tell me, we've just had kind of 15 months of pretty horrible times. I um, mean, horrible times for humanity, but horrible times for music and horrible times for singing um, at all levels, professional, right, to the am amateur choirs. How, how have you guys survived that? Have you, I know you've had some changes, but how did you survive, Raphael, that, those times? Well, um, there was in fact a, a break from October. October to early January. We couldn't rehearse at all. Mm -hmm. um, there were such strict uh, restrictions that you couldn't meet at all. Yeah. Um, not at all. <laughs> um, so since February, I think, we could start with, with the rehearsals again. But again, we had to think about how can we do it? Where is a room which is big enough? Mm. Everybody has to do a test on that day. And yeah, we had, to, we had to decide whether we count ourselves as professionals or as non-professionals. On the paper. On the paper, at least. But we said, okay, if we're professionals and we have a concert in July, we have to rehearse for that. We have to do the um, meetings in place, we, we tried some things like BandLab, that's a um, digital audio workspace. Did online. it work? Not really. It's, it's, a, it's a possibility to learn the music. So everyone sings his part. And then sure. time after time, you can hear all the other parts and it's getting fuller and you can yeah some circles with that and, and try to learn the music. But it's, of course, not the same as being in place and rehearsing with the group yeah it's, really it's been it's been difficult i think for many groups this this last year as groups who normally would have been progressing and and getting more known and um, increasing repertoire have been kind of freewheeling and just waiting for the, even the professional groups have found it very difficult to make good things you know it's it's very it's 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 hard to keep in the public eye for professional groups um, and recordings from home, they have their limitations, don't they? They, you know, they, it's nice to see the, f the familiar faces of uh, the a cappella groups, but it's not the same, is it, as concert footage and all that sort of thing? Hey, it, um, when you do a concert, you sing. So, so sorry, Raphael. I said it was such a flood of home recording videos at some point. We, we thought about it and then said, okay, the whole internet is full of home recording videos. <laughs> Yeah. Who cares if there's another one? It's not. It's not the point now. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really difficult, and I think difficult choices. And we didn't know when it started how long this was going to be, how it would affect us. And um, tell, tell me a little bit about your. You did. You sing all sorts of uh, repertoire, and yeah. um, so in your concerts, will you do everything? When you do the outdoor festival, will you do some? Early musical, madrigals, or will you be just doing light music? Um, well, this time our, our repertoire, our, our concert, we have the title um, Summer Jazz. So Summer Jazz, okay. Most of it is like chess arrangements, a lot of arrangements I did, and chess arrangements from um, some of other groups. Um, yeah. We have so there try, is King uh, Singers, there try is ourselves real in some King Singers arrangements. Um, yes, yeah, so it's like that. Yeah. Of course, there are six of you, and, and that they, those arrangements work quite well. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. But, but the girls always, well, not always, but sometimes are complaining, we have too much king singers, we're always singing in that low pitch, we have to do yeah. something else. Yeah, Veronica, yeah. Veronica is our tenor in that case. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great that you're doing your own arrangements, by the way, and I think that's, it's, it's really lovely, because by doing your own arrangements, you find your own voice. Um, and there's a lot of clone groups around, aren't there? People who who have their heroes and they want to sound like that group and they want to be that group, really. But it's great when you start doing your own arrangements and 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 you know becoming your own identity. Um, what are plans beyond? You you recorded a CD, didn't you? Is that was that a while ago? It was in two thousand seventeen. 
So that slightly different um, lineup in the group then. Right. The bass and tenor were the um, yeah first members where we founded in 2013. Um, yeah, the plans are to have hopefully more concerts. We, have, we don't have fixed dates at the moment, but this program Summer Chess, we thought about to sing this in several locations afterwards. Yeah. Um, maybe a new CD. Um, yeah. <laughs> one, um, one student of mine oh, really? who, who bought our CD uh, said to me, well, the CD is really nice, but please, could you record another one? My mother is hearing it all the time and I can't hear it anymore. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Don't record another CD. And don't forget, when you do your concert in July, there'll be people there who will spread the word. And so I yeah. hope that you get really busy with, with concerts. Um, <laughs> it's really good. So are there any plans? Be, you're all, are you all studying now education? We're um, most of us. We, we, we are finished. Or Manuel two, uh, two has finished the educational studies. So uh, you will be you'll be all staying in the Munich area. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there, there's there's um, there's hope that if you're all in the same geographical area, you can continue with concerts yeah. and rehearsals and recordings. Yeah. 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 Well, I'd be really interested to see how you get on and and follow your progress. Did you do any competitions? Not as an ensemble. We were at the um, German choir competition with the Madrigal Corps of the Hochschule. Yeah. Um, also with the Landesjugend Corps, we had a uh, competition, the Let the People Sing. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking there's a nice competition not too far away over in Leipzig. You know, the a cappella festival there mm -hmm. has a competition. It's quite a nice, not quite a nice stage for, for up and coming groups. Just to just to let you know, because it's um it's quite good. They, they, if you if you there are lots of prizes and there is a people's prize and a jury prize and and um one of the prizes the group gets to come back in the next festival and do its own concert in yeah. the main festival with all the kind of the big names of the a cappella world. So it's quite a nice uh, thing if you ever feel like doing that. Yeah. Um, hey, well, it's been great to catch up with you. And thanks for sharing your music. Thank you. And I hope your concert goes ahead in July. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and do say, say hi to Veronica from me. We'll do. Tell, tell her she was great. <laughs> <laughs> She's a working one of us. She had the, the great opportunity during that COVID time to sing a lot of um, church services and that stuff because she's the, the only real professional singer of us. She, right. Um, did a lot of studies in that um, direction. Yeah. So she can't be here, but has the pleasure to sing some nice music. Yeah. Well, she was here in spirit, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, Six Four Chords, it was great to talk to you. And um, I hope we will uh, meet again soon. Yeah, that would be really yes. great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.